Hi, my name is Martha Zink and I'm with Solian Consulting and this is another video in Delve into FileMaker 12 and I'm going to be talking about container fields. So in this sample file I have an expense report database and you'll see that there are these question marks that are scattered on the layout. Whenever I click on any one of those a pop-up comes up. So it's actually a, a new window and it's What's cool about this is that it's a floating window, so that if I move this to the side and try to click on the back window, I'm actually, I've actually activated the back window, but the floating window will always stay on top. Now, looking back at the, the new window that was created, there's a container field in here, and there's a PDF that's stored in this container field. What's new to FileMaker 12 is the ability to interact with whatever's in that container field. So you'll see that if I hover over the PDF, I get options like moving from one page to the other, I can save a copy of the document, I can print it, and so on and so forth. I also have the ability to even highlight text and copy and paste it if I really wanted to. And because my anchors are on, if I actually stretch this window, the container field stretches really well with it as well, so the PDF uh, formats to the right size. There's a lot of cool things here, and I think that it's really going to make the use of container fields much more powerful. Now, in order for a field to be in order for a user to be able to interact with the field, let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to go into that help pop-up layout. And when I click on the container field on the data tab of the inspector, you'll see that I have the option to optimize for either images or interactive content. So here I've selected interactive content. Now one thing that caught me right off the bat was um, I tried to use the interactive content in a portal and it won't work that way. It actually has to be in the right context, so not through a portal. It has to be through the native layout. But you can always create pop-ups and things like that to make that work. So make it make it a new layout that shows you that related data. The cool thing about that is you can also start playback automatically. So if you have a video, as soon as the video pops up, it's, it's actually going to start playing the video for you. Now, optimizing for interactive content isn't always the right choice. For example, if you have a layout, and let's say that you have something like this on a list view, a user is not going to see a video or a, a very tiny image and try to interact with it. So going back to the example, let me show you a couple of other places where I use this. You'll see that here in this, for this expense report button for the question mark, it's actually going to show me a video. Now just like I pointed earlier, I can, this is a floating window so I can still interact in the background. So this video is actually teaching me on how to fill out an expense report. I could just move that over and I could actually go over here and, and mimic whatever the video is doing. So from the perspective of a help system, this is actually very, very useful. It actually reduces the amount of, of written training that needs to be done. Instead of writing a 700 page manual, you can create a set of videos, PDFs, things like that, that will help the user get through the system. So hopefully you find that useful. Hopefully you're using container fields. I know I've seen people who avoided container fields because of things like not being able to interact with the PDF. Hopefully this is a step in the right path and you'll be able to start using these. Thanks.